My guest today is best-selling author, life coach, four-time TED Talk speaker, Cheryl Hunter. Now, her road to success was far from a success-only journey. You know, I, I've often said the quickest way from A to Z is not always in the straight line. It's not always at the most feverish pace. And sometimes it's the hardest parts of life that sharpen our blades. It's those things that create problems in us that cause us to rise up and face those things and bring out the best in us. And you made that decision in Japan, it sounds like. I you sure stopped did. judging yourself. Yes, I realized that there, perhaps I wasn't seeing it correctly. Perhaps there is such a thing as wabi-sabi and everything that's wrong about me could be my salvation. So I set out to figure out how to make that reality rather than just a, uh, an aha moment. And I had said to my mom, <clears throat> without telling her what happened, I said, Mom, I'm depressed. And she, she, she's one of those people who hadn't experienced depression, so she said, do you mean bored? And I said, no, <laughs> full on depressed. And she said, well, here's my advice. Find someone or someones who have it worse than you and help them. So I thought, well, I'm young, screwed up in the head, and I have no future. Who could be worse than me? Oh, old, screwed up in the head with no future. So I started volunteering at old age homes. And I thought I'd heard this concept go through the open door. So I thought I will take whatever someone tells me as advice as a door to go through. And someone started telling me about uh, personal development seminars. So I started taking those while I was volunteering at old age, age homes. And there were a lot of people who were Holocaust survivors. And I thought, perfect. I can learn from them and offer some help to them at the same time. And there were some who fared well and others who understandably hadn't. And I wanted to understand why. So I started interviewing them and the war vets and then ultimately 9-11 first responders, people who'd gone through bona fide trauma. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to hear what they had done that had worked and what they hadn't. And I started building upon those things for myself, but thinking I'm gonna codify my journey and my steps and give it away ultimately. So I'd started taking these personal development seminars and felt so much better when I was there and not so good when I wasn't, so I thought, I'm just going to get trained to lead them, and then I can always feel good. Mm -hmm. And I realized it was a calling. As I was helping others, I was helping myself. But I still had never told my story until one night I was leading one of these seminars, years in. And I was leading an exercise on forgiveness. And I sort of posited that we can forgive anything. <laughs> and a woman was raising her hand and finally stood up and said, no, you can't. I had gone through genocide in my country. We came to the United States, and then I've been abused by my husband, and my children were abused by him, and there's certain things you can't forgive. And I kept saying, yes, you, you really can. It's not about them. It's about setting yourself free. And she wasn't having it, and nor were the people in the room. People were slamming notebooks down and walking out of the room, and I thought, I am for the first time going to lose the room. And I had a moment with myself and said, you are no longer an 18-year-old child who cannot handle whatever people will judge about you. And I told my story for the first time. And you could have heard a pin drop because they'd been with me for some time. But regardless, this woman realized that it was true she could forgive anyone and anything. And she was set free. And so was I.